Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and Chairman Crapo for holding a hearing on these important housing bills, including the CO Alerts Act. And I, I hope the committee will consider in its agenda having uh, several other housing related opportunities. Uh, I, I think this is one of the most critical elements of our economy and in the lives of our families. And uh, I hope we can do more. Uh, in the age when uh, bipartisanship is supposed to be dead, Senator Scott and I were able to work together and introduce uh, this life-saving bill. Uh, carbon monoxide is a true silent killer. It is tasteless, colorless, odorless, and yet all it takes is a few minutes of exposure to face serious health risks like brain damage and death. But luckily, this danger is entirely preventable. Carbon monoxide alarms are a proven way to alert families to a grave health threat. But a CO detector is not a luxury accessory for well-to-do homeowners. It's a basic life-saving necessity that belongs in every home, and that includes public housing. Unfortunately, while federal assisted housing units must include smoke detectors, there's no such requirement for carbon monoxide alarms, and that's unacceptable. My state of New Jersey is one of the 27 states that require CO detectors in private dwellings, but federal public housing is exempt from these requirements. Requirements. In 2019 alone, four public housing residents died from completely preventable carbon monoxide poisoning. Two of those deaths took place in South Carolina, a state like New Jersey, requires carbon monoxide alarms. There's no excuse for not taking action today to save lives. And HUD has publicly, publicly stated that Congress needs to act, and I hope that our bipartisan bill that adopts international fire code standards requiring alarms to be present to detect carbon monoxide emitted from aging appliances, forced air furnaces, fireplaces, and attached garages happens. As the winter fast approaches, residents fire up their furnaces and the risk of carbon monoxide increases. It's time for the Senate to follow the House of Representatives that overwhelmingly passed the CO uh, Alerts Act. And so in this regard, I'm going to stick just to this line of question, although I'm tempted with very few housing opportunities to broaden it. But uh, as I just mentioned, uh, Ms. Matthews, in South Carolina, like New Jersey, uh, the state has carbon monoxide detector requirements. But despite the presence of state laws, two public housing residents died from carbon monoxide poisoning in South Carolina earlier this year. In accordance with state law, were there carbon monoxide detectors in these public housing units? Um, Senator Mendez, um, I joined the Columbia Housing Authority on July 1st, 2019, and it is my understanding that there were no carbon monoxide detectors installed in these public housing units. Do state officials, to your knowledge, conduct regular health and safety inspections for carbon monoxide detectors in public housing, which is federally funded? No, I'm not aware of any state agency um, responsible for conducting health and safety inspections of carbon monoxide detectors. Yeah, and the reason is that HUD doesn't inspect for carbon monoxide detectors because there is no federal carbon monoxide detector requirement. And despite state laws, all four of the carbon uh, monoxide-related deaths in public housing this year occurred in states that have some type of CO alarm requirement but do not inspect federally assisted housing units for them. It's clear that we need to close the gap. Earlier this year, a HUD spokesman said, Congress can fix this by passing legislation requiring carbon monoxide detectors for those living in HUD housing units where detectors are needed. And I, I hope that uh, this, this hearing uh, motivates us to do so. Ms. Bailey, do private uh, property owners who decide to participate in HUD Section 8 housing choice voucher programs have to abide by federal health and safety standards, such as having smoke alarms in their buildings? They do. Um, they, uh, yes, they do. Uh, their inspections are required. So uh, that, I asked that question as a predicate to saying, so wouldn't requiring private landlords who accept housing vouchers to comply with carbon monoxide alarm requirements, similar to those that already exist for smoke alarm requirements, be consistent with our existing practice of requiring private landlords who choose to participate in HUD programs to take certain steps to guarantee the health and safety of their residents? Yes, it would. And it seems like it is a responsibility for the for federal dollars to go to housing that's safe and uh, for people. 
And so, uh, finally, Ms. Bailey, your organization, the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities, states that public housing assistance currently helps about 1.9 million seniors, 2.4 million people with disabilities, 6.3 million people and families with children. Uh, isn't it important for the federal government to protect these uh, groups of fellow citizens, uh, well over 10 million to 11 million from the dangers of carbon monoxide? Absolutely. Thank you.